Hello, hi, and welcome. This is the demo of Civitas 2230. Uh, everybody gets access to this on the page. It's a one to two player demonstration, so you can play it with two players. You just basically create the room, invite people to come and play with you, or you can play it solo. And we'll go into the solo rules as we get to the the opposition's turn when we start playing um, as them. And uh, yeah, it's basically um, a reduced version of the game. It's a pretty it's a pretty cool setup we've got. So basically, Civitas Nihilium is starting with a demo amount of stuff. So basically, Civitas Nihilium would normally start with an awful lot more standard Patriots, an awful lot more um, Ion as well. But we're going for the full four facilities in two zones, or plus one IZ zone, as we're doing with Wilfred Talon. And also as well, we've got the enemies among the people special presidential rule, which once per turn you may deactivate any of your facilities and claim from the stash the original resource cost, except the uh, standard patriots. They go to the stash, and that number of CN expats are removed from the top of the CN expat draw pile. So um, if you haven't seen the video that talks this through, or if you haven't seen the quick start guide, just a quick sort of um, introduction as to what's going on. So Civitas Nihilium is currently in what is known as the Days of Decay. The, the city is losing population um, non-stop because we're, we're currently in one reputation on the scoreboard in the actual game itself. But thematically, the, the, um, the Civitas is at the bottom of the League of Patriots, which is a, a consumer-driven um, United Nations, if you can imagine it. Uh, basically, city-states are competing for population. The, the, the best of, the, of Civitas Nihilium's people are actually leaving, and they're called CN expats, and that's these guys here. This is the pile of CN expats right here. So there they are there. Um, it's a reduced number of CN expats that we've got for the game. We actually have a lot more than than that in the actual main game, but for this demonstration there's a reduced number. Same for the policy cards as well. Um, when when CN expats leave Civitas Nihilium, they get shuffled into the, into the, into the bidding deck where the policy cards are, and then policies are sent out and we bid on them and if CN expats are in there we bid on them as well you'll see that as we go through this 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 play guide um I'll just start off with the with the general sort of um ins and outs of what we're doing in this demo as well so the Nihilium Ion Station that's locked you have to play with that we're playing with the Nihilium Ion Station which basically means that whenever Ion is spent on the table Let's have a little look here on the actual list. So allocate this technology to any industrial zone and add one standard Patriot to it. Whenever Ion is spent anywhere and at any time, it comes here. Only the Nihilian player may use this location policy. If they are unable to keep this policy active, the Ion returns to the stash or another active dump instead. So I've got it locked. Um, if for whatever reason that is to be removed, then it just you just imagine it's removed and you kind of go from there. But I've got it locked in here just to so just to show you guys that that's that's the sort of thing that we're going to be playing today. So when the ion is all gone from this area here, which is the Civitas Nihilium player's active stash of ion, when the ion leaves here. Civitas Nihilium may claim a chaotic victory. Now you can cheat because there's lots, there's um, there's not that much ion in this demonstration. You can allocate all of the ion to all of your build hexes and just say, and I've won. Um, but don't do that because that would be silly. So let's play the actual game rather than <laughs> rather than just take one move and then remove all the ion straight away. You can't do that in the main game because you have 30 ion to deal with, and there's no way you're going to allocate 30 ion to to um, all of your hexes. You won't have that many from the beginning anyway. And plus as well, you need to survive in order to thrive. And and it's it's a tricky one with the with the chaotic victory because some people like like to play the chaotic victory. If you're the chaotic neutral type of character in Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition, for example, you may want to kind of like, yeah, let's watch the world burn. <laughs> But from a thematic perspective, you may want to see if you can actually win the game in a more, um, not moral uh, way, but in a much more um, traditional sense by, by getting to either 25 rep on the League of Patriots here, 25 rep on the League of Patriots, or getting to 50 rep on the League of Patriots and winning the game that way. Um, that's basically Civitas Nihilium set up for, for, for now. Let's go and have a look over at Civitas Tau, our our rival. So Civitas Tau starts with seven reputation, two policy points, two ether, two ion, two standard patriots. This is this is the standard setup for President Q33N. Um, the non-binary 28 28 percent transcended transhuman, a beacon for all who wish to start their journey in becoming one with the machine. So this is a transhuman utopia. 
this Civitas is. Um, when you purchase Ion, so whenever this player purchases Ion, they may choose a CNX pack from the draw deck and shuffle them into the bidding deck. And then they can keep half of the winning bid for any transhumans they win during the bidding phase. So this particular character, this particular president, is able to purchase transhumans half the cost from the from the bidding from the bidding layout that happens during the bidding phase. So they can go through this. Let's just have a little look. So if we flip this over, so not a transhuman, not a transhuman, but look, there we go. B198, big B. They they are a transhuman hacker. So when they buy Ion, they can look through this deck and take a transhuman out and stick it in there. So then it so then it it pretty much guarantees that it will come up at some point during the bidding phase and they'll be able to get that transhuman half price. Thematically, what you would imagine is that in the Mysteries of Profundum, which is the second game in the in the Civitas Universe series, Civitas Tau is actually um, in Civitas Nihilium with a transhumanist roadshow, and they're they're going around trying to lure people that are interested in transhumans and interested in becoming a transhuman and interested in transcending and becoming one with the machine. So basically, um, they're trying to. They're trying to persuade these people to join, and what's actually happening with this mechanic is that is that this president is sending agents into Civitas Nihilium every time they purchase Ion. So they'll go they'll go and they'll buy Ion off of off of Civitas Nihilium. They'll turn up and say thank you very much for the Ion. But as that's happening, some agents that are working on behalf of Civitas Tal are going undercover and and finding the transhumans in Civitas Nihilium that may be um, on the edge of potentially leaving the city because of its poor reputation and they're, they're they're getting them to kind of come up for bidding and then when they come up for bidding they don't have to bid that much because they've already worked their magic on uh, brainwashing maybe those particular transhumans into coming or just selling them the dream and they want to come to the to the, the wonderful Civitas Tau Utopia so we'll play that through and see how that works out but yeah this one isn't on reduced as i just said just now it's a full playing full playing character we'll have it as our rival today and we'll play a civitas nihilium and see how we get on okay cool so i've got the 30 the 30 standard patriots already sorry 15 standard patriots already set up in here in the normal game you would have you would have 30 so that's that's already set up just to kind of help people know that this is where they this is where they start off but we'll go through the actual game and see how we go and uh and yeah let's start why the hell not so every player at the same time goes through the start section of their mat so one reputation and five policy points so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to use tabletopia and sell and and set some cameras so what you do is you go over to the policy the league of patriots reputation and the policy point scoreboard you press shift and then you press a number so i'm going to press number two and that's camera number two saved now if i go back to my presidential mat i can press shift and number one and that's camera one saved. Now if I press two, I go straight over there. And if I press one, I go straight over here. Now I'm gonna go over to the bank. This is the bank where the ether is, and these are the hex, these are the hex piles that we're drawing from, and I'm gonna press number three. So I'm just gonna go shift and number three, and that's camera saved as number three. And then I'm gonna go over to the Civitas Tau player, and I'm gonna go shift and four, and then I'm going to come over to this section, which is the CNX Pat meeples, which represent these these people here, and these are the standard pop, the standard population. Again, these are reduced. These are obviously reduced, and the policy deck is reduced. And I'm going to do camera five there. So we've got four, three, two, and one. Perfect. So one reputation and five policy points. So let's head on over to the scorecards. And we'll put one reputation on there. That's already done. Great. And then we'll put five on the policy points there. Perfect. Nice start for Nihilium. Okay. No, zero, zero ether. So I don't go to the bank, which is, I don't go to the bank over here and get my five ether. Ether is the money in the Civitas universe. Okay. And I, but I do get 10 ion. That's already here. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That's my 10 ion. Okay. Great. 15 standard patriots there in there. And now it says four facilities, two zones plus one IZ. So what you do in the game when you're, when you're, when you're drawing hexes or drafting hexes, um, I come from a Magic the Gathering background, so I always say draft. But what you what you do is you you basically go over to the facilities, uh, give them a shuffle and then a cut. So shuffle, 
we don't need to cut in in this one because we don't we don't need to and then you draw the top four facilities one two three four okay and then you bring them over here and they go into your hand if you drag them to the bottom of the screen so there they are in the bottom of the screen and now um, it's the Civitas Tau's turn to do the facilities so Civitas Tau comes over and looks at that okay two facilities comes over and takes the top two and they bring theirs uh, can I press four and go there no I can't All right, I'll do that that's the last two four and then we'll put those down there God, I love the artwork on these they're so great <laughs> okay and then we go over to Civitas Nihilium and they draw two zones plus one IZ so again let's shuffle draw one two and then an IZ as well and then an IZ is there that's it okay come back over bring this over here and then pull those zones into their hand there they are and then if we go over to Civitas Tau, Civitas Tau will be like, all right, I'm going to I'm going to go and draw my two zones. So they draw their two zones. So they go one, two. Oh, not not very good for Civitas Tau, two residential zones. Let's go back to Tau. Yeah, not very good. So at this stage, Civitas Tau will be like, oh damn it I've got two residential zones and I've got a, a an industrial facility Curtis cybernetics and I've got a a blue commercial facility so facilities and zones work differently zones are wild they come in at the beginning of the game as active but then for the rest of the game they come in as inactive and then you have to place ion on them and build the zones basically but zones are like they can go anywhere so a zone can go here a zone can go can go next to a zone like that you can put a facility there and then put a zone there next to it however facilities can only connect to active zones that are the same type as that as they are and the indication is just here in the top right hand corner so this one is an industrial facility hence why it's yellow and it can only connect to an industrial zone so it says here this hex can only connect to an industrial zone that industrial zone has to be active you can't connect facilities to, to active facilities of the same color you can't connect facilities to inactive facilities of the same color facilities can only connect to active zones of their particular type very important that's the zone rules okay in a nutshell really hard to type that out in in a, in a in a game manual my goodness i've gone around i think i've done about six or seven different variations of, of that of that explanation in a paragraph i hope i'm clear here in the video i really hope i am um yeah that's basically that so this guy or girl or whoever they are they they are they are not they are not happy with with um, this hand so they're, they're gonna take a mulligan now we're going over to Civitas Nihilium and we we'll look look at Nihilium and they've got a one blue and they don't have any zone so they're gonna do a mulligan as well so they don't have they don't, they're not doing all that 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 good either so let's just do that so we'll just show you the mulligan so this is a mulligan happening right now. You hand back all of your facilities and all of your zones because you're not happy with what you got. Okay. Um, if this happens a couple of times and it gets frustrating, just give yourself an equal amount of zones and facilities that work. This is a demo after all, and you want to start playing straight away. So don't worry too much if you're if you're going you're going in this in this draw section. I'm doing this primarily for showing you how the actual main game works. There's a lot more zones and a lot more facilities than this demo. So it's it's going to be it's going to be a little bit frustrating if you're drawing from this demo like that and you're not getting the types of cards that you want. So let's just do it again. So um, now we do it straight away. So for four facilities, two zones plus an iz and then we shuffle and cut shuffle one two three what was it three plus an iz uh two plus an iz okay that's it two plus an iz done so these are these are nihiliums stick them in the hand and then one two three four okay better than nothing when you mulligan like this the rule is you can't do anything again. You can't re-mulligan, re-mulligan. A mulligan, you just do it once, just like in, just like in uh, Magic the Gathering. Um, I mean, no, Magic the Gathering, you reduce mulligans, but in this, the mulligan only happens once. So two facilities and two zones for Civitas Tau. Okay, so two facilities, one, two, 
two zones, one, two. Okay, that's much better. We've got a residential zone and two residential facilities there. That's good. Okay, let's go back. Let's stick those down here like this. Okay, cool. So that's the facilities and the zones done. Now CN expats, zero CN expats for CN. Um, they don't get any anyone that's uh, leaving their city at the beginning. That would make no thematical sense whatsoever. But they do get a material cube. Now, activating and deactiv deactivating material cubes, you just basically pick a material cube up here from the right-hand side, which is your inactive stash of material cubes, and you stick it over here on your left-hand side, which is your active area. So um, non-active or um, inactive area and active area. Okay, and that's where everything goes. So your money would go here, your CNX pack cards would go here before you actually place them out into your Civitas. Um, your Ion goes here. Everything, Ether, the whole shebang, it all goes here on the left-hand side. Inactive materials, material cubes only go on this side here. The policy cards and the CNX packs are exclusive to the CNX pack character. They have them both next to each other, and the pool of standard meeples and the pool of the CNX pat meeples go here as well, next to the side, just to kind of keep everything under control with the Civitas Nihilian player. Think of the Civitas Nihilian player as a kind of quasi game master. That's the best way to describe them, I think. Um, yeah. So yeah, they they yeah, basically that. So let's have a look at where we're going now. So we've done our um, setup for Nihilium. Now we go over to Tau. No CNX pats for Tau. Uh, but two material cubes, so one and two. We can move these slightly down there as well. There we go. All right, cool. So now we're going to go over here, ba, 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 and we're going to start the game round. So the game is played in a series of 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 game rounds. You play game round point one to two. Then from two you go A to F. So you go A to F, each player goes A to F. Let me just make sure that's nice and clear. Each player goes A to F. And then from, from that point on, you then go to number three, where you take your ether bonuses for CRC population. That's where you earn money for people that are in your CRC. You do the bidding phase and policy exchange. Buildings then complete. The ion is sent to the CM player who, who basically splits the, the ion half and half. If it's an odd number, the highest amount goes to the stash. The lowest amount goes to the CN expats stash. So the inactive stash is the ion inactive stash, which is which is over by the hexes. And the active stash is, is where, what you just saw just now, which is this amount of ion over here. So that's basically that, that in a nutshell. So we can pretty much crack on. And, and go for it. So first player decided based on highest overall popula population. That's us. We've got the most population to begin with. Each Civitas in turn order takes their standard turn A to F. So enact policies and see and pat abilities. In the main game, if you were playing with a Nihilium Ion Station Diffuse Dump, which we are right now, you would get one of your meeples and you'd stick them there like that. Okay, like we've already done. So that would be the, the first bit. And you would announce to the table, you announce to your players that you are that you are now taking the ion that's being spent. You're the ion energy monopoly guy. <laughs> okay. And then um, after no C and expats, we don't we don't enact C and expat abilities. We receive, lose, and populate. Now receive. We don't receive anything because if we look over here in our CRC, when we're when we're on between one to five reputation, we get zero zero standard me um, standard meeple standard patriots they don't they, nobody comes to us when we're between one and five um, we start on one reputation and that's the reputation rosette league of patriots is the is the is the the un type of type of organization and and on the scoreboard over here if we just have another look at the scoreboard yep see we're in number one there and number one is red as is number two number three number four and number five. And over here is a little key that tells us what's what. So between zero and five reputation, we have to lose five SPs. So we don't just not get standard patriots come to us. We also lose standard patriots as well, which is a real shame. But here we go. We've got to lose them. So from our SPs, we send one, two, three, four, five. Five go to the stash. And then what happens and I'll quickly just shuffle this. In the main game, when you actually get the physical game, you would shuffle and cut. You shuffle and cut them. Cutting is important because if you shuffle and then cut, if you shuffle, there's this moment because you can see the backs. These backs of them, you can see who they are and you can see the industrial zones and the facilities. You can see what they are <clears throat> to some degree. 
it's important to then cut them because you're not shuffling with any particular bias. Um, you just have it. It's na it's natural. So we were noticing that in playtesting. I was doing it myself. Uh, everybody was doing it. And we were like, no, let's shuffle. And then we cut the deck. And that's the that's a super rule in this game. So shuffle and cut. So basically we now we now take we put five into the policy deck. One. Whoop. If you hover, it goes it goes orange when it works. There we go. One. Let me get a better angle on this. It's usually the shadow. That's how it works in Tabletopia. One, two, three, four, five. Shuffle. There we go. Five CN expats are now in the bidding deck. They're processing their leaving. They're leaving Civitas Nihilium. Okay, so that's, that's that. Now populate. So we now need to pl place our zones onto our onto our game area so we've got more we've got more commercial facilities than we have residential areas so let's do residential like yeah let's go let's be wild let's do something like this let's do something like this so we'll go out we'll come out like that and we'll put our commercial zone here like this and then we'll place so we can place hexes but they have to come in inactive so this hex will connect will connect to a commercial zone okay, but it connects inactive. This hex will connect to a commercial zone, that's okay. It will be inactive. And this one will connect to a commercial zone as well. Oop, sugar, not on top of it. Will connect as well, but that has to be inactive also. So we've set up our blueprint for our Civitas, right? We've, the zones are already active because if you think about it, we're starting with cities that already exist. So the zones are here. The zones the zones make up the majority of the city and the facilities are connecting are connecting um, special areas basically special special locations special special buildings etc etc uh, really refinery can go in here that's cool there we go you go in there and you go in inactive as well and now just let's just have a little look at what we've got so we have a science facility um, let, no, let's let's focus on the zones first of all so we have an industrial zone this industrial zone um, is yellow, so anything that connects to it has to be a yellow facility. Um, you can connect zones to it, like I just showed you. Zones are wild, obviously, but, but facilities have to connect to this. Three standard meeples that are placed here will produce one material cube. So that will activate one material cube when we take standard hexes. Material cubes are used to build hexes and they're used to build certain policies, especially policies that are technological based, um, technology based, um, infrastructure based, that kind of stuff. You would need material cubes and up to the value of, of, of 12 can be placed here. So we can place up to 12. Um, yeah, we can place up to 12 uh, SPs on this hex and produce three, six, nine, twelve, four material cubes from this industrial zone. Over here is the residential zone. If you place four SPs here, you get what that hammer, that sort of court hammer um, symbol is, which is a policy point. For every four SPs you place here, you get a policy point. Policies are really, 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 really important. And if if a lot of the time when we were playing in playtesting, we were like, OK, so a lot of the players were like, well, I ignored policy points because I was trying to get reputation to win. But then Gary raced ahead of me and won the game and I didn't win because I didn't get the reputation that I wanted in time. And it's like, well, had you focused on policy points as well as rep, you would have been able to have had policies that would have been able to have stopped Gary on his pursuit to 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 winning the game. Policies tend to disrupt. They tend to cause havoc at the table and stop players from running away with the game. So it's important to build up policy points. If other players see you building up policy points, they'll have to build up policy points because that's where you get the counter to policies. And that's where the intricacies of the game can happen. Yes, you can all just race for reputation, but that 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 usually ends up with only one player with only one player racing ahead and the and the rest of the players getting 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 really knocked by it. You have to get your policies in, you have to play policy cards. You have to buy policy cards, you have to get policy points, and you have to spend the policy points to enact the policy cards. Very, very important. Residential zones, four SPs, no maximum. You can place as many as you want on here, will get you policy cards. Now, if we go over here, we've got two ether, will generate 
um, sorry, two SPs will generate one ether, or you've got four SPs that will generate a material cube. Commercial zones are kind of like you're mixing between the two. So they will they will generate money for every two meeples that are placed here. You'll get one ether coin um, to the value of one million ether, which is basically a one ether coin so it's the unit of one but it's one million because in the previous games in civitas nihilium it was it was um one ether because you were playing as a single character so thematically we had to bump it up to a million um also as well the force the four sps will allocate to a um a material cube now this is this is this is um allocation this is an allocation based zone so if you were to place for example eight um, standard meeples here you would have to say at the beginning of your taking hex bonuses stage what you're going to be getting so you would say okay i'm allocating these four guys to produce a material cube i'm allocating these two to produce an ether and the other two to produce another ether so i get two ethers and one material cube it works like that it's all about allocation okay and now let's have a look at the facilities so this one this is a science facility now we have this science facility to, to flip it you have to place one ether one material cube one standard patriot which will stay there and not get spent they're they kind of like they're like the workforce in the civitas universe when you place them on facilities they're like forced labor as well it's quite it's quite um it's quite dystopian <laughs> naturally and then we've got two ion here as well so the two ion it would cost to actually activate it as well this goes to the cn player the cn player just um splits it in half keeps half and takes the other half to the inactive stash the sps stay there the material cubes go back to your inactive material um cube stash and the one ether goes to the bank once you've spent it also these are allocate uh, um, allocation slots so if you think about it, this is this is this is the ether allocation slot. That's the material cube alloc allocation slot. That's the SP alloc allocation slot, and that's the ion allocation slot. If you fill up three, and you don't complete this hex, when it's the hex taking the hex bonus stage, you gain one rep. That's called development propaganda. So in Pyongyang in North Korea, there is a hotel, a pyramid hotel. You can Google it, and it's it's not finished. It's been um, on in development, I think for 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 nearly ten years, and it's it's literally sat there. It's a hundred floors high, and it's sat there empty. It's a proper white elephant. And and the but the thing is, is that it's is that it's propaganda. It's generating buzz about about Pyongyang. Yes, of course, it stays there for too long, and it becomes it becomes a nightmare. But Initially, whilst you're doing, whilst you're building your Civitas, for example, you're saying, "Oh, we're go we're going to be building this science facility. We're going to be building this entertainment facility. There's an education facility getting built here, and and it, it it starts a hype. It starts a buzz. So development propaganda. It's a real thing. It exists in the real world, and we use it in this game to maximum effect. So yeah, allocate three building slots on this hex and gain one rep during your hex bonus stage. Now, if we flip this hex, we get to see what it's like. Now you can flip the hexes. You can see what they do of course you can that's how you choose hexes when you draft so it's important to have a look and see what this does so this goes once this hex becomes active search the bidding deck and you may take one of the following policies the ion dome surface defense or ion bombers whoa so the surface defense is basically protects you against ion, ion bombers and the ion bombers destroys hexes um, if you can imagine if you bombed this hex down here for example and you destroyed that hex and this hex came back into my hand by law of the way the game works in, in regards to hex placement, all of these zones deactivate. They all get removed from the game and all the resources are gone. So it's a really, it's, it's really quite um, devastating. War tends to not happen all that much in the Civitas, in Civitas 2230. It does happen, but not that much. This is more of a Cold War type of game that's leading towards war. So when war does occur, when ion bombers are being used and ion, surface, ion dome surface defences are protecting them, we're at a later game stage because these are fairly expensive policy cards so they're not included in the demo this 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 is in here just to show you that they exist but it's important to note that that's what happens with regards to combat um war is a as an exceptional situation and i look forward to hearing the play the play stories that you guys come up with from when you actually play the game um can't wait to hear what happens it's, it's going to be really cool okay cool so what this what this hex does 
and what this all tells you is that it's it's a it's a science facility so it's a science facility and it, it connects to an industrial zone the the meeple on the back of the on the back of the castings of the allocations that meeple has to stay here on this hex in order to keep it active everything else disappears like i just said um it produces this hex when you take hex bonuses it produces one policy point just straight off the straight off the wagon so once you're once you're getting um, hex bonuses during the hex bonus stage this develops one policy point if you stick a cnx pack here you get an additional policy point if you stick a material cube on here you get an additional policy point if you stick another material cube here you get another policy point and if you stick another material cube here you get a policy point so maximum this will develop one two three four five policy points if fully upgraded you can add extra policy points by adding extra CNs, so we can go up to six, seven, eight, nine, ten. It's rare that you get that many CNX pats to place onto these onto these hexes, but you can go up. It can be it can be no maximum on the CNX pats. As for the the material cubes, they can only be upgraded up to a maximum of three. And we'll get to that a little later. Now let's have a look at the next one. So here's the uh, media facility. So that costs five ether, four material cubes, four standard patriots, and five ion. Development propaganda, like we already talked about. Flip it over, and it says if an ion transit is active within your civitas, you may target a rival's hex and steal X amount of SPs from it and convert them to X amount of rep. Repeat by repaying this hex's ion cost. Whoa. So basically. So basically, if you have an ion transit active within your Civitas, you may target a rival's hex and steal their standard patriots. And if there's a, if the rival hex has say seven seven patriots on it, you can go there, steal those seven patriots, and then you convert them to seven reputation. So you gain seven rep. So this communications organization, what they've done is they've leaflet bombed that particular hex area. They've spread propaganda about people coming to this particular civitas, and then they sent an ion transit over to go and pick them all up. <laughs> and then when they arrive, they're like, yay, thanks, this place is great. And you gain reputation. So that's how it works. Um, the four, the four uh, meeples that, that it costs to build this particular facility, the four meeples that it costs, um, here we go, there's the four there, they have to stay on this hex. So they stay on this hex and that keeps the hex active. When you're collecting, collecting your hex bonuses, so let's look at hex bonuses, this hex will generate without being upgraded three reputation so you'll gain three rep on that if you have a cnx pat in here you get a plus two reputation on there so if it's only a cnx pat and just this hex active you get five reputation if you put another cnx pat on there it's another plus two so you get seven reputation and if you put material cubes in here up to the maximum of three you get one reputation for each material cube you stick on there now let's flip that hex because that's where it is and let's check out the education facility similar story allocate three building slots development propaganda this one costs three ether three material cubes three standard population uh, or standard patriots one ion now let's flip it and see what it does okay once this hex becomes active search the bidding deck for the policy card titled hacking the league of patriots and place it into your hand wowzers we don't have hacking the league of patriots in the policy deck this is just just for um demonstration purposes like i said but you get the three the three standard uh, patriots sit there and you get the three ether and you'll get if you place a cnx pat in, in here an extra ether and material cubes ether 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 so this education consortium people come here to basically learn and what happens is you get money because they pay you for their education so you get three three million ether that basically is an ether for a CNX pat being here, so think of think of that as like a specialist teacher, um, up to um, up to no maximum, and then the material cubes up to the value of three for each one. Okay. And then over here we've got the entertainment facility, which is inactive. De again, development propaganda. This costs three ether, three material cubes, five SP, so pretty expensive this one, and three ion. Now if we flip it. <clears throat> this hex generates ether and reputation. Now, when you see the icons next to each other like this, that's and. When you see the icons slightly diagonal to one another, that's or. So and is next to each other, or is slightly diagonal. So you choose which one you want between the ether or the reputation, if it's diagonal, or in this circumstances, and in this case where they're next to each other like this, you basically pick, uh, sorry, you don't pick, you get both. So it's So this produces one ether, 
and one reputation because it's a it's an arena it's putting on concerts you're generating money from it and you're getting reputation as well and when you place a, a cn expat on here it also obviously increases that po po uh, possibility think of them as potentially performers or maybe even maybe even facilitators or research and development people going out and finding the right people to do stuff or maybe even writing um propaganda tunes and all that kind of stuff um again very north korea also uh, you get an ether and a reputation for adding material cubes again up to the maximum of, of, of three um, but here with the cn expats you can keep adding them and totally fine the meeples these five here they have to stay on the hexes all the meeples have to stay on their allocated hexes to keep those hexes active if they become inactive they no longer serve as hexes in your in your in your um civitas as active hexes so let's look so we currently have right now we've got 10 ion okay we've got 10 ion we've got one material cube we've got no ether and we've got no uh policy points well we've got sorry we've got five policy points so we're not too worried about the policy points so let's let's do this we're in the current um populate stage now in in b so we're going to move our, our our guys now that we've explained what these hexes are all about so i'm going to put three guys in there and then i'm going to put one two in there um let's look at this remember i said just now that once all the players have taken their turn each civitas takes their ether bonuses for crc population so over here is a key that tells us how much we get for um, people that we keep inside our our citizens registration center the crc so for every two meeples that are left inside the crc we get two million ether now over here on the commercial zone for every two meeples we leave here we only get one million ether so remember when it's an icon on its own like that it's just one okay i didn't want to i didn't want the game to have constant numbers all over the place i didn't want it to be all very numbers heavy so i'm um, trying to keep it reduced so we're going to bring these guys back because for every two we get two it's a better deal so we're going to leave these guys here and leave these guys here and i think so that's two four that's four million ether um how much ion does tau have no ion so they're going to be buying ion off of us um ba, 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 ba. what are we going to do i think we'll do this i think we'll put our four guys no i think we're going to put three on here as well three on here for material cubes one two three we want to get out of our one rep right that's our priority maybe we put all of them on here oh because Tau's going to buy us ion. Let's do it. We're taking a risk. We're going to we're going to assume that Tau's going to buy ion off of us. So we've put three. We've put nine SPs, standard patriots. We've put nine standard patriot meeples onto the industrial zone because if we look, we'll get three material cubes when it comes to hex hex um, uh, bonus stage which we don't get right now, but we do get when we move to the next step of our, of our turn. So now we're in the next step of our turn. So we've moved all of our meeples and we're going to get, we're going to get our bonuses. So this, so this particular president will now receive our hex bonuses. We start here and we go up. So we don't get any reputation because we don't have any material cubes on our CRC. We can put material cubes here later when we do the upgrades and that will give us reputation in the next part in the, in our next go when we when we get to this stage but right now we don't get anything because there's no material cubes there um over here we get three material cubes like we just discussed so we'll do that one two three we'll get our three material cubes over here and we'll put them there obviously in the game everything's translucent and sexy in tabletopia you can't have transparent um you can't have transparent assets annoyingly because we wouldn't necessarily be able to see them um okay so they're there and then we've got um that's it right that's all of our stuff that we've that we've taken that's cool now we've so we've received hex and c and expat bonuses now commit to builds and upgrade so we're going to put three one two three there and then we're going to look for the one that needed only one material cube which is the science facility and we'll put one science facility over there two ion on there oh sugar er bugger we could have put a standard patriot there no it doesn't matter it doesn't matter i was going to demonstrate development propaganda but we don't need to worry about that right now we're okay so we're allocating it because we're building a blueprint for ourselves 
Those hexes can stay in our hand if we wish, and we have a maximum hand size of eight, which includes policy cards that we haven't enacted and um, facilities and zones that we haven't placed into play. But I like to do this. I like to create a, a, a blueprint of where I'm going to go, what I'm going to do. Um, I like to see it in play. Things that I'm not interested in, things that I don't want to build, I'll keep, I'll keep in my hand. That's how, I, that's how I sort of manage my hexes when I play this game. And a great game it is too. Right, okay, so that's commit to builds and upgrades. That's done. We don't get the bonuses during the upgrade phase just because we place the cubes there. We don't, and builds don't complete yet. But what happens is even if this was all allocated, it doesn't complete. So what happens is that we basically move on to the next step because we're just committing to builds and upgrading. It's a timeline. This is a timeline. Now it's chair the League of Patriots and perform, a, perform one secret trade. In a two-player game, that secret trade is kind of irrelevant, but it's trade nonetheless. So we would say to Civitas Tau, hey, do you want to buy anything right now? Do you want anything? And they're like, um, yeah, I think I do, actually. I think I want a... Um, a uh, thingy off you and you're like a what are you they're like well maybe I want an ion off you and I'm like oh have you got any ether they're like no and you're like okay well no trade so okay trade doesn't happen now it says we draw two take one zones and facilities but we're only on one reputation and if we come over here and have a look at this little guide when you're between one and five reputation you can't draw hexes so no drawing of hexes into your hand that can't happen okay so that's it the game round is the Civitas Nihilium's turn is finished and we move on to the Tau player. Now what happens is we get the zones and we stick them in the facilities and we shuffle them up. We can do that at any stage in the first game round. I'm doing it now. You should normally do it with, as the game starts when you hit number one. But, you know, we forget these things. It's a, it's a, it's a complex game and, it's, and it really doesn't matter when you do that sort of thing, provided that you do it before people draft or draw their hexes on their on their actual turn rather on their setup turn okay so then we move over now we move down to our other player and with the magic of editing we have everything set up ready to go now i want to go through this in a logical sense for the solo players because there's solo playing rules that that come into force now when you're when you're playing um as the AI and you're making the AI rules, uh, AI movements in the so in the solo game. So just to kind of um, take this directly from the comprehensive play guide, just so I don't I don't miss anything out. Um, you play the game round as normal through table setup, the game round, your standard turn, and the subsequent phases, all with the following exceptions. The AI rival starts with all start points, resources, hexes, and cards, zones placed down active, with an industrial zone placed in the first spot if available. Nope. If not, a commercial. Okay, so the commercial zone has to be placed here for AI rules and then a residential zone after that. Okay, um, a residential. After this, the zones are placed. All of the AI players' facilities are inactive, not on the table and considered to be in hand. So they go, they stay in hand. Okay, when it is the AI standard turn, observe these in the exact sequence as they are presented. So here we go. So we've got... Um, enact policies and see an expert abilities. If they don't have any policy cards, they gain 1 million ether. Okay, so we're doing the solo rules now. Normally we would run down through this as a, as a standard player for the two player game, but because we're doing a solo player exp experience here, I'm going to show you how this works out. This is kind of a good video if you want to play a two player game or if you want to play a solo player game. Um, this solo player stuff, just take note of it. You won't be doing this, but these are the specific rules if you're, if you're playing solo. I say you won't be doing this if you're playing a two player game, but we'll do this right now. So if they don't have any policy cards, they gain 1 million ether. Yep. They gain 1 million ether. So let's take the million ether. Oh, that's two. Let's take 1 million ether. Do, do, do. Stick it there in our inactive area. There we go. That goes there like that. Okay, great. If they have policies but can't play any of them this turn, they gain a policy point for each turn. That doesn't count. We don't have any policies. Um, if they don't have any CN expats, they gain 1 million ether. Okay, we don't have any CN expats. We gain 1 million ether as well. Okay. 1 million ether and if they are able to enact a policy play this as if you were controlling the play and your civitas were your rival okay we don't have a policy if they are able to enact to see an expat play this as you were as you were controlling the play and the civitas were your rival and um, the ai receives or lose population if the ai player is playing as nihilium and they have between zero to five rep they must discard three ion to the stash this is not an exchange for ether okay that's a penalty if you're if you're um 
if the uh, Civitas Nihilium player is playing as the AI player, but that's okay. Um, but bear that in mind. Uh, solo AI receive hex and C and expat bonuses. So now the solo, a- so basically, um, we're doing the receive, lose, and populate. But we've done. Well, let me have a look at the receive, lose, and populate. That's as normal, isn't it? I think. Yeah. So we're going to be receiving. We're going to be receiving SPs. So if we look at the League of Patriots here, we can see that um, check our reputation. We're on seven reputation. We get three SPs. So three. St- Standard Patriots come to this CRC. One, two, three. There they go. Okay, they're there now. Now then, we look at we look at the um, the potential for populating. I guess. Oh, I forgot to activate these hexes. So the zones are active. There we go. Okay. So now it says the minimum number of SPs for Ether bonuses must remain in the CRC. Okay. Cool. So this is um, when we're receiving our hex bonuses are so basically our populate right so we're going to be um the populate side of the receive lose and populate is this so the minimum has to stay in the crc then it says excess sps fill zone allocations before moving to the next starting with the first zone hex connected to the crc for example if an iz or an iz which is an industrial zone is connected the ai won't start adding sps elsewhere until three sps are placed in this zone as that's its first allocation to gain a bonus. So I'll grab this SP right here and we'll do this. So the first allocation is a commercial zone, right? So does it, what does it say about commercial zones in terms of SPs? So the first bonus allocations are filled. Three SPs for an IZ, six SPs for a commercial zone, three SPs for an IZ. Oh, wow. Okay, cool. So it's six for this one because it's four, five, six. So one, two, three. And the two have to stay there. The minimum has to remain in the CRC. So that's where they're doing. That's what they're doing. They're doing that. Okay. so the AI, although the AI is getting is gaining things through special rules because it's so low play, they are limited on when they're positioning their their SPs here. This is where the balance has to occur for the AI player, because obviously the AI AI player isn't actually making any, any decisions. It's just it's it's um it's all about getting this balance right within the game. So we've received our SPs. We don't lose any because we've got seven reputations. So we're now going to move our SPs in the populate section here. Now, the movement is a special rule for solo play. So we're doing solo play, remember? So excess SPs fuel zone allocations before moving to the next, starting with the first zone hex connected to the CRC. And here we have a little example in the guide bo- in the guidebook. It says, for example, if an IZ is there, the AI won't start adding SPs elsewhere until three SPs are placed. So if there's an industrial zone, an IZ or an IZ is 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 at the in the first place. Um, IZs have three standard Patriots SPs. They have three for their allocated slot. So we would fill three and then we'd move on to the next one. But we don't have that. We have a commercial zone. So let's see what it says about that. For commercial zones, the first allocation is two SPs for the Ether bonus. But after this, when allocating again in later turns, it is four SPs for the material cube. For residential zones, it's three SPs. So we put two SPs in here for the commercial zone. And then we put the rest the final one up there for the residential zone. So the rule is you must always keep your ether bonus. The minimum number of SPs for ether bonus must always remain in the CRC. That's another solo player rule as well. So these are solo player rules. These aren't the rules for the other player. These are, this is the solo play aspect. Okay. Now then let's keep moving on. If the SP first bonus allocations are filled three, six, three, the rest of the SPs go into the CRC and remain there for the game round. If there are no inactive facilities placed, but if there are facilities awaiting SPs, then they go to the cheapest SPs uh, costing inactive facility, breaking ties with the cheapest ether. This is how we basically build facilities later on, um, followed by the least amount of material cubes required for the build. If C and expat abilities call for the placement onto hexes and the AI player has these available, move to the C and expats to these hexes. If there is a hex with a C and expat bonus symbol in the upgrade bar and the AI rival has a C and expat meeple in their CRC, move the blue, me- blue meeple to that location. Finally, receive hex and C and expat bonuses as normal. Okay, so we're going on to receive hex and C and expat bonuses. So receive hex and C and expat bonuses as normal. If a choice is to be made, like taking ether or rep, always take rep unless AI has 10 plus rep and zero of the other. In that case, take the other. <laughs> so funny. I wrote this quite a while, quite a while ago. 
after loads of testing and it's really interesting just to hear it back um it's great so funny i love i love this game it's really really brilliant okay cool okay so now we collect our ether bonuses for the commercial zone we don't collect for the crc because we don't have any upgrade cubes in here at all and we don't get the ether on the crc bonus until the third part of the game round so we'll go over here and we'll have a look at what we get so for the two meeples that we have in the commercial zone this ai player gets one ether two for one here so we'll just go over to our bank over here we'll get our one ether there we go stick it in the hand go back to us and plonk it down there on the left hand side okay so civitas tau is getting pretty rich pretty pretty wealthy pretty quickly here by the looks of things okay cool so now we've got um our cnx pack bonuses are done now it's got commit to build and upgrade so once we move forward with that we just see what's happened with this Count up the red numbers on the AI player's lowest costing inactive hex in hand. So we count up the lowest one. So that's this one here. That's three, four, five, six, seven, eight. This is one, two, three, four, five, six. So we've got six. Now add three to that number, so that's nine. Now place all inactive hexes that fall below this total number. For example, the AI player that has their lowest costing facility that's red build numbers added together total four we add three so the ai player now places inactive facility hexes onto the table that have a red build number totaling seven or less the standard rules for hex placements are observed with hex facilities not being placed if the relevant active zones are not present place the facilities for the ai player starting with the cheapest first and build the ai civitas in the most logical zone placement way possible okay so here we go this is the first one so one two three four five six seven eight nine this is three four five six seven eight so that falls in they're both getting placed so we put them in this one can go here i guess like that and this one can go let's stick them in there like that or we'll put them over here like this there we go let's make it interesting and they both go inactive like so Place the resources for building slash activating the inactive hexes in the same manner that you place the SPs. Fill allocations up for each resource, then move on until no resources remain. SPs remain on the CRC unless there is an excess amount over the CRC's first ether bonus amount. Then they would move just like the other resources. If there are excess active excess active material cubes upgrade the civitas active hexes starting with the crc fill in the first three allocations moving up through the rest of the civitas hexes thereafter okay cool so we go we're going to do this so we're going to go um the cheapest one first which is this one here so it's going to be one ether so one ether is going to go there there we go and then three ether is going to go over here one two three and then we've got um two material cubes that goes over here like that we don't have two meeples they can't go on there but we do have one one ion can go there and then over here one ion can go over here as well being there like so and that i think we can also go three yeah three on there as well is that three? Oh, it's disappearing <laughs> that's why there we go we have three down there that's cool let's put that there for the time being so in tabletopia if you get a little bit of a, of a of a ledge on your hex it ends up creating this little um this little black hole underneath your underneath your hex which is a little bit little bit annoying but there we go so this is interesting so we've got one ion two two material cubes and one ether we have fulfilled three that one that one and that one we have fulfilled three um, aspects of this government facility which means that at the beginning of our of our hex receive hex bonus stage we'll get one rep for the civitas tau ai player because they've filled three allocations on this particular build slot okay so that's that's good news for the for the ai player bad news for us but good news for the for the ai player um, over here we've only only allocated um, two build slots so far with the three ether and the one ion we still need to add two extra material cubes and we still need to add two extra meeples on there so that's that's frustrating but that's the way it goes um, it's looking likely that sp allocation isn't going to happen until our zones are fulfilled so that's that's another interesting point to raise um very very interesting when you're playing the ai and the ai civitas nihilium this happens fairly quickly because they have lots of sps to start off with but when you're playing against a uh, um 
an AI player that's one of the standard presidents, one of the presidents that isn't Civitas Nihilium, you end up with a with a situation like this where it's a slow progression through the zones. But because you start on low reputation as Civitas Nihilium, they start ramping up their reputation a little bit sooner. And the balance is just perfect. It's really challenging. But yeah, we'll see how this goes. Okay, cool. So now we've done the that, we're going to do the material cube upgrade. So the material cubes have already been um, sent forward and been allocated, so they don't go they don't go here. They would go there if, potentially if we were playing as a, as a standard human player, but we're not. We're playing as the AI, so we're following the AI rules, and it's it's prioritizing the facilities to be built first. Okay, so now we go um, solo AI purchase ion. If AI rival is not playing as Nihilium, if Ether is available to the AI rival, buy ion equal to the amount on the hex they are committed to building. So equal to the amount they're committed to building. So we don't have any hexes right now that we're committed to building that have got the ion on there. So that there's no there's no ion requirement right now for the Civitas Tau player. We would have purchased one or we would have purchased two. Um, but let's see if there's further rules. So if no hex has been laid in active with an ion requirement and the AI rival has two or more ion, then the AI passes on the purchase of ion. If the AI rival has two or less ether, they pass on the purchase of ion. If the AI rival has three or more ether, they buy one ion. So we have we have one ether. So if the uh, two or less ether, they pass. So we're passing on purchasing ion. That's a shame because the, the Civitas Nihilium player, us, we kind of needed the ether. So solo AI, chair the League of Patriots. That's not us. We're not the solo AI. And then we go to solo AI, draw zones and facilities. So when when with regards to trade because we didn't actually touch on trade just now with regards to the solo side so i'll say what happens so the human player chooses to give to the ai players hand policy cards and or inactive hexes that they wish to trade the human player gets to take however many they handed in off of the top of the respective and relevant decks human player must play a unit of any resource of choice to the bank of their trade for example if the human player gave the, the ai two policy cards the a hex zone and a facility they get to draw the top two policy cards and two hexes from the top of the relevant draw decks they then choose four resources to send to the bank this can be a mixture of any of their non-committed ion ether material cubes or crc sps but not cns scn expats okay so resort standard resources are everything apart from cn expats and um that's something you can't you can't um send back into the into the stash there so solo ai draw zones and facilities now it's the ai players turn to draw and take one of the zones and facilities draw four take one zones and facilities so let's see what that says here so it says ai player draws and takes the first number for example if it says on the ai's president mat to draw three and take one they take three hexes into their hand if it says draw five take one the ai player must take all five zero to five reputation rules still apply so if the ai player has five or less rep they would not draw hexes and then there's a solo note here in the in the guide which says if an ai player has exceeded the eight card hex in hand limit they must discard in the following order of priority the hex with the highest ion cost the policy with the highest policy point cost ether breaks ties okay solo note when players hand in cards due to exceeding hand amounts, those cards are removed from the game entirely. Worth bearing in mind. Also, um, we uh, we have to look at where that where that's at. So, um, with regards to the lowest priority, the the ether is breaking the ties on there, right? So we've got the the order of priority. So the hex with the highest ion cost. So it's it's not lowest priority. It's the highest priority. Okay. Bidding phase and policy exchange. So we're going to just, just going to quickly go and take four off of the top of this of this deck over here. Here we go. So one, two, three, four. Okay, the Tau player has a lot of stuff to choose from now. Let's go and have a little look at what we got. So the Ion Omni Carriage, Educational Exports, Curtis Cybernetics, and an Industrial Zone. Woo, lovely jubbly. Let's put these down. Put them down here for later. Now remember, they're all inactive. They come in inactive. The industrial zones will come in inactive as well because they're not active. They can't be played active. So before we move on to the bidding phase, we have a little look at what we've got over here on the game round. And it says, 
Um, that's the end of our go with Drawn Art, Drawn Art Hexes. So it says over here in the game round, each Civitas takes their ether bonuses for CRC population. That's this bit here. So Tau gets 2 million ether. Two, that's two ether coins for having two, for having two Patriots in there. Nihilium gets nothing. <laughs> oh, damn it. Okay, so we'll go over here. We'll get the 2 million from the bank. Let's go to the bank and get the 2 million. One, two. Let's go back to the player. And then in the active area, one, two. So they've got three ether. Okay, cool. So that's that's that for the for the um, CRC population ether bonus round. Remember not to do that in your actual standard turn. You don't take these bonuses during your standard turn. It's something that's important because what happens is basically everything moves in that in that kind of way because next is the bidding round so you get cash for the bidding round you see. So the money comes in from hex bonuses from things like commercial zones and stuff like that which you can then use to to um, to uh, upgrade and and commit to builds but then you get another influx of cash another influx of ether that happens in the third stage prior to the bidding phase happening so it's important to remember that those two things are different earning from facilities are very different from earning from crc population okay it happens they happen at different times and it's because the flow of the game would be broken if it didn't go in that way so this is this is good so always remember that and always be on it okay bidding phase so i'll just read up what the ai says about the bidding phase so all policy cards are three ether each this is the solo ai rules the, the policy cards are three ether each in a normal two-player game we would just be auctioning for cards Purchase opportunities switch between each card, starting first with the AI rival. The AI will always buy if they have three ether. Ding, 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 ding. We've got three ether. Um, if they are unable to purchase, the human player may choose to buy the card for three ether as well. We repeat this process with each card drawn, switching the choice to buy first. If cards remain unsold, they are discarded from the game entirely. All of the AI cards are concealed until it is the AI's turn to enact them. All right, let's do this. So we go over and we get the two cards from the policy. Top of the policy card, the policy. We get the two cards from the top of the bidding deck. Okay, two policy cards. We put them side by side. This is the first card. We go We go in the, in the Western reading order, so from left to right. This is the first card. The AI player gets that for three ether. So three ether goes straight to the bank and the AI player takes that card. Now, we'll rotate it, we'll stick it there. The, these cards remained concealed. The AI player can't, you, the AI, AI player won't look at it and we won't look at it until until their, their turn to enact policies. We'll have a look and if they can do it, they do it, basically. That's the rules for policy cards. This policy card gets discarded, so we'll stick that over there because Civitas Nihilium wow, 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 has no money. Okay, so moving swiftly on. Okay, so um, that's the bidding phase completed. Now we have a look at what's next. So um, we've got building completes, ion sent to diffuse, CN, CN player fuses half the ion. Okay, we don't have, this is nearly built, three allocated slots, but not ready to be built just yet. This, two allocated slots, two more, two more slots to be filled, material cubes and SPs. And this one is SPs and um, SPs, just SPs. Yeah, just SPs. So, yeah, Tau needs SPs to be allocating in these two areas here. And also, we don't have any facilities that are currently being built or, or being completed. If they were being completed, we would be flipping them like this. We would flip. The ion would go there. The ether would go to the bank. The SPs would remain on there. And then whatever's written on that would be, would be enacted straight away because it usually says do something. So you do whatever it says there. And then during the hex me jiggies the hex bonus stage you get all the hex bonuses and stuff for that hex being active and the, the money obviously goes to the bank and ion goes here and material cubes go to your inactive stash over there that's how you complete a a facility hex okay so buildings complete all ai all ion for builds is sent to the stash unless the scenario has the nihilium ion station active and in play that's a solo player rule in this demo we definitely do it's there it's locked we can't do anything about it so the ion would definitely come there and the highest half would go to the to the inactive stash and the lowest half would come to the cn players active ion stash which is over here 
Okay, so now it's the second game round of the game. So first player is decided based on highest overall population. So we still have the highest population. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We've got our ten population there. And Civitas Tau has four. One, two, three, four. So we have to discard because we are here we go in app policies and cnx pat abilities so we can't do that and like i was saying we have to discard here it comes receive lose and populate we don't receive any because we're still on one rep even though we've upgraded we don't count our rep just yet we don't get our rep bonus just yet and we have to take the hit on the sp so they're still leaving so one two three ah, four five oh don't leave and then we obviously have to shuffle them in so i think there's only f there's uh one yeah here we go two three four five and that's it um obviously reduced because of the demo there's a hell of a lot more cnx pats than that and there'll be a lot more when we sh when we ship the final version of the game especially if players opt in to have their 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 uh, character cards put into the game so yeah but they they get shuffled in like that so they've all gone they've left and now we are populating we can't populate because it's a it's a one-way it's a one-way trip we can't bring any of these sps back once they go into those zones they have to stay there unless we build a transport facility which i think the tau player actually has if we go over here yeah the tau player's got move any number of standard patriots and cn expats once per standard turn to anywhere within your civitas that's the ion omni carriage a really great inexpensive it costs absolutely nothing to inactivate oh no it's a three two two one it's fairly i remember having it in one of the play tests and it, i got it i got it activated fairly quickly um but yeah you can't move your SPs at all until you get yourself a transport network built in your in your Civitas. So the SPs are positioned there. It's a job for life. Okay, so there we go. So that's receive, lose, and populate on the second game round of the second turn. Now it's receive, hex, and CNX bonuses. So finally, we start getting some bonuses. So we've got one, two, three. We start at the CRC, remember? We ignore the ether bonus because that's the next step of the game round. But we take our reputation bonus for the one, two, three reputation that we have here on our mat so we go over to our league of patriots reputation there's the reputation rosette league of patriots reputation and we go one two three oh still in the red things are looking things are looking pretty damn rubbish for us right now hopefully we can do something um well i doubt it but we'll see okay and then we take our material cube one two three our one material cube for the three SPs that are in there. We don't get anything for that guy and we can't move them. They're currently stuck there, dead end right now. Pretty tricky for them, not very fun for anyone. Okay, and now we do um, our receive. Hexia and expat bonuses is done. There's nothing else to be done over here. We can't do anything. And now it's commit to builds and upgrade. So we're gonna commit to build. So we're going to do this now. We're gonna do um, a commit to building let's do it if we had a a transport facility we would do the transport facility right now but we can't we would have that there and we would put one at that sp on here and we would try and get that allocation filled but we can't do that right now so what we're going to do instead is we are going to put this cube oh nowhere we just just don't put it anywhere can we really one, two, three. We don't have any other resources. We're really, 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 really rubbish at the moment over here. Things aren't looking very good for Nihilium at all. Okay, can't build, can't upgrade. Chair the League of Patriots, trade for him and perform one secret trade. So, when we're playing AI, it says here, the human player chooses to give to the AI player's hand policy cards and or inactive hexes that they wish to trade. Human player gets to take however many they handed in off of the top of the respective and relevant decks. Human player must pay a unit of any resource of their choice to the bank for each trade. For example, if the human player gave the AI two policy cards, a hex zone and a facility, they get to draw the top two policy cards and two hexes from the top of the relevant draw decks. They then choose four resources to send to the bank. This can be a mixture of any of the of their non-committed ion ether material cubes or CRC SPs but not CN expats. So we can send SPs that are in the CRC, don't have any. Um, we can send material cubes. Can we send ion? 
Yeah, we can send ion. Yeah, we can send ion for anything that we want back. So we've got inactive ones here. Do we want to lay more? No, not really. I don't think we need to do any of that. So we don't need to do that at all. We're kind of gazumped really at the moment. Um, that's that for the for the trade. And I think that's our that's our 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 turnover. Draw two and take one. Um, annoyingly, we don't have we don't have facilities that are active because if we did, we would be able to use this presidential rule right here. We would be able to use that, but we can't use that, so we're not going to use it. Annoyingly, no, tricky, tricky, tricky. Okay, that's us done. So we're completing on our turn and we're moving over to the towel player now. Boo who? Okay, back over to the towel player. We're done there. We can't draw any hexes because we're on this on this awful situation. We're on four. We can't do it. Um, let me have a look here a second. Actually, let's let's rewind. Let's look at this. Because this key here tells us when we're up shit creek without a paddle what we can do. Pardon my language, but we can do things. So we can exchange hexes that are currently in our um, in our build area for one material cube. We can trade three hexes that are in our hand for one ether, or we can trade ion for an ether, and that's up to three max. So maybe we want to do that. Maybe we want to do that, because then we get ether. So let's trade three ion. Yes, this is how we get out of it. So I hate player elimination in games. Not a fan of player elimination. Let's put it in there. There we go. So they can go in there. Now then, we get our three... We get our three ether. Now, demonstration purposes, obviously, it's important to remember that if you're playing a two player game, going back on things and stuff like that is kind of not, it's not really recommended. It depends, you know, it depends on if you're learning the game and all that sort of stuff, then maybe it's okay. But with this, I kind of tend not to do it. If it's a demonstration, then yes. But if you miss it, you miss it. You kind of got to be harsh with yourself when you're solo playing. Um, yeah, I, I love it. All the Instagram stuff that people see all the time with the solo solo board gaming community. Everyone's like fudging dice and stuff like that. And it's like a, it's a thing that everybody says they do. So three ether, that's great. So we got our three ether. Now we've rewound on this, okay? Because I wanted to show you how we can get out of this situation. So we've rewound and we've gone back to, this is something that's out of the rules, but we're doing it for demonstration purposes just to show you. So he's decided, the Nihilian president has decided to send the three ion to the stash and sell it for three ether um, on the black market. You can imagine something like that, right? Because as they're in, they're in a in dire straits and they need to be doing something quickly. So the most important thing for for the Nihilian player right now is to try and get one of these one of these hexes active. So let's have a look. We can't get anything active unless we have SPs. We don't have SPs. So let's at least fill three building slots and get the recommend the um the one reputation for the next time. So um we've gone to the commit to builds and upgrade stage now where we can now thankfully place one there, one there and two there that's three allocations filled development propaganda will happen now we have a look at where else we can go we can't go anywhere else we've only got two ion left this needs three that needs three that needs five okay so we've got development propaganda playing there so that at least gives us a chance in the next game it's a chance it's a chance we'll be losing all of our sps though because we're still on four rep okay cool so um, that was commit to build an upgrade. Now chair the League of Patriots, trade for and perform one secret trade. So we can't we can't do anything really. We could hand in a hex that's expensive and get a and get a hex back, but that's gonna cost us one of these one of these items. So we can't really do that right now. Um, like I said at the beginning of the game, we could allocate all of our eye on here and force a chaotic victory like this. Yay, we win! Chaotic victory! But because it's a demo and we have a reduced amount of ion, that's a silly move because you're not really going to learn much about the game by doing that. So we don't, we won't do that. But um, I'm tempted, but we won't do it. Um, okay, so the trade, the trade forum we're not going to do. And then we're going to get to the draw two, take one. We can't do that either because we're still, we're still in the red zone. We're on four rep. Okay, um, that's already done. We've done our three in there, three max that we can do. 
OK, we're handing it over to the towel player. We're moving over reluctantly, but we're doing it. OK, losing all our SPs on the next go. Boo hoo. But let's see how it goes. Let's see how it goes. OK, so let's go back to the towel player. So here we go. Um, the AI rival, here we go. If they don't enact policies and CN expat abilities for the solo player. So I'm just going to make sure that we've got everything here. So enact policies and CN expat abilities. So here we go. We have a policy card that is that is currently flipped. We can't look at it right now, but we're going to see where we go. So if they don't have any policy cards, they gain 1 million ether. They do have a policy card. If they have policies but can't play any of them this turn, they gain a policy point for each policy card they are unable to play. So that's worth pointing out. If they don't have any CN expats, they gain 1 million ether. So we'll just get, get 1 million ether quickly. We'll just run down that list, get our 1 million ether. Okay, that's a million ether for the towel player. There we go. Um, if they have CN expats but don't but can't play any of them this turn, the CN expats remain in the AI rival CRC hex. Nope, we don't have any CN expats. If they are in it, if they are able to enact a policy, play this as if you were controlling the play and your civitas were your rival. If they are the if they are unable to enact a CN expat, play this as if you were controlling the play and the civitas was the rival as well. Okay, so let's have a look. Let's flip this. What is it? Can we play it? Foreign Crime Syndicate 6 Ether. No, we can't. Flip it back over because, I mean, we can look at the card. It's devastating. It's a horrible card. We can look at it, but we don't have 6 Ether. So this player gets a policy point. The majority of the policies in the policy deck, maybe not in this demo, but definitely in the main game, have on this policy points rather than ether. Sometimes it's policy points and ether, but a foreign crime syndicate doesn't have to go through parliament. You don't have to enact it. It doesn't have to go through go through a, a, a judgment core, but it does cost money. Um, so this is this is crazy. Look at this. Target a rival civitas and choose to take either two ether or one ion. If the rival has the no crime policy active, you may take four ether and two ion. In the first instance, the rival player will initially lose five rep. This policy is infinite between turns while it targets the same player, but no rep deduction on repeat. Once the rival has gained six rep back, uh, six, six rep back, this policy is shuffled back into the into the bidding deck. <sighs> horrible card okay um haven't paid for it yet it's there oh goodness me okay so they've got that now okay and then um we're moving swiftly on because that feels dirty okay okay so now we move on to receive lose and populate civitas tau has just double check the reputation civitas tau has seven rep on the league of patriots so for seven rep for the, for the tau tau will get three sps so three standard patriots come to the crc one two three yay that's the crc getting the three the three standard patriots lovely lovely jubbly civitas tau are oh yeah now then Okay, now we populate. So we're moving SPs. The minimum number of SPs for Ether bonuses must remain in the CRC. That's two for Civitas Tau's example there. Excess SPs fill zone allocations before moving to the next, starting with the first zone hex connected to the CRC. For example, if an IZ is there, the AI won't start adding SPs elsewhere until three SPs are placed in this zone, as that's its first allocation to gain a bonus. For commercial zones, the first allocation is two for the Ether bonus, but after this, when allocating again in later turns, it's four SPs for the material cubes. For residential zones, it's three. So we go, we go straight up here and we allocate the four. One, two, three three there and we don't move any further because it's because it's going in it ha we have to fill this allocation for the commercial zone before we can move up in the first go we could have gone two and then four up there but we didn't have the excess meeples to do that so we're, we're now focusing on our um, the ai is now focusing its attention on the commercial zone and trying to get that commercial zone up so it will gain it will gain ether from the hex here it'll actually gain two million ether from this so that's good news for for the ai but the two million the, the two million in here as well that uh two f yeah two million there also so yeah getting rich getting rich quick ah! okay so the next one here we go so 
receive hex and cnx pack bonuses so now we go through the hex bonuses we haven't upgraded this particular hex here at all we're going up here and we're going to be receiving the hex bonuses so was would this would the crc get ether or would they get would they get material cubes let's find out what this actually does so the rules say for when you're receiving bonuses on your hexes you may receive them as normal. If a choice is to be made, like taking ether or rep, always take rep unless the AI has 10 plus rep and zero of the other. In that case, take the other. So if you have zero of the other, take the other. So zero of the other. So we don't have, we don't have material cubes. So we take the material cubes. Okay. So at the moment it's got one, one ether here. We have ether. So we're now going to take the material cubes because we have zero of the material cubes. So if we've got zero of the other, we take the other. In this case, is material cubes. So we're getting one material cube on this side and sticking it in our active area for the commercial zone. Now we're moving up. We don't get anything for there. We do. Yes, of course. Here we go. We don't get anything for the two allocations that are filled here, but we do get rep for this allocated slot here because it's development propaganda. For the one ether, tick, one ion, tick, and two material cubes, tick, tick. So we go over here to our rep and we move up. The AI moves to eight rep. Okay, cool, eight reputation, there you go. So that's the, that's the, um, that's the receive hex and CNX pack bonus stage complete. No CNX pack bonuses. We don't get anything there. Now it's commit to builds and upgrade. So we're going to be committing to builds and upgrading. So the upgrade happens. The upgrade cube goes in here like so. That's happened there. And then the um, ether will probably not go anywhere. The ether stays where it is, and the SP stay where they are as well because of the because of the um, because of the rules. Also, we now have to look at our, our placement of hexes. So we're back to that rule again. Now, if you remember, we've got to count up the red numbers on the AI's lowest costing inactive hex in hand and add three to that number. So lowest inactive hex in hand. So zones get placed straight away, but they get placed, they get placed inactive. So here's a zone, comes in inactive, and that gets placed in the next available slot. So reading from left to right, it will go here in that slot right there. Okay, remember zones are wild. They can be placed anywhere against zones, against facilities, not against inactive facilities. You couldn't put a zone like that. That can't go there until that's active, but it can be placed here. Okay, very important point. Something I didn't think I actually pointed out earlier on. It can't be placed like that. It cannot go there. It needs to be next to something active. So it's wild, but it needs to be placed with one line against something that's active. And obviously, because we're in the second turn, zones get placed inactive and you have to pay the ion cost, which is four ion to get that industrial zone activated. OK, so that's that with the, with the zone. Now we're going back to the um, the actual costs of these hexes. So let's have a look. Let's flip all of them. OK, the lowest costing one plus three is that's one, two, three, four, five, six. So that's nine again. So that's nine. So three, four, five, six, seven, eight, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So these two come into play. This one stays behind because it's too expensive. So we bring this one in if it will fit. It won't fit. This can't be connected to that industrial zone. Inactive to inactive, that doesn't work. This has to be active for this to be placed next to it as inactive. It ha cannot go there, okay? So this zone can't be placed. The education facility can be placed because that can be placed. This side here is facing against the commercial zone. So that can go in that place like that, and that's good. So these two are now in hand. They will remain there, and then we carry on. So that's the hex the hex uh, placement rules. Just to just to double make sure that that's all all correct and succinct, I'm going to go through it again. So when you're we're placing hexes, basically what you must do is you count up the red numbers on the AI's lowest costing inactive hex in hand, add three to that number, then place all of the active hexes that fall below this total number. For example, the AI player that 
has their, their lowest costing facility. That's red build numbers added together, totals four. We had three, so the AI player now places an active facility hexes onto the table that have a red build number totaling seven or less. The standard rules for hex placement are observed with hex facilities not being placed if the relevant active zones are not present. Place the facilities for the AI player starting with the cheapest first and build the AI Civitas in the most logical zone placement way possible. Logical is from left to right for me. Okay, and then uh, place the facilities for the AI player starting with the cheapest first and build the AI Civitas in the most logical zone placement. Place the resources required for building activating the inactive hexes in the same manner that you place the SPs, fill allocations up for each resource, then move on until no resources remain. SPs remain on the CRC unless there is no excess amount. So we've got excess resources. We're going to go through go through it and see what we need to place. So yes, we have one ether. That will go there like that. So the ether goes there. Okay, and that's it. That's it for that positioning. We've done we've done our, our, our hex build. So commit to builds and upgrade is finished. Now it's purchase ion. We can't purchase iron, we don't have any money. So that's the end of our go. We now draw four, take one from zones of facilities. Now remember, we're drawing four because it's the AI's turn. One, two, only two of these are left because it's the it's the demo. And these come over here, like so. Oops, cute, put it there. And then this one, place it there. Now let's have a look at these. What have we got here? So he's got the Yanatovic Re-Education Institute. Okay, when you convert steel or destroy SPs from a rival, instead of dumping to the stash, they are ret uh, retained and sent to your CRC. I love this look. It's like a re-education institute. They all sit there. There's like a library and stuff, and all these books come down. There's these TV screens. They're all getting re-educated. And there's the city in the background. Look through the window. It all looks so sick. And then over here, we've got the science facility. Okay, let's have a look at that. That's Morbus Laboratories. Okay, it's a science facility where they build weapons. So the CTCG Isolation Lab is in there. That's where it's at. So you basically get it. You can upgrade this facility to a CCT CTCG Isolation Lab, which is the closed time circuit generator. And it's a serious, serious, serious piece of kit. It can dis displace time. It's pretty nuts. Um, there's that. There's that. Okay, right. There we go. All right, so we've ran out of hexes. We also have finished Civitas Tau's turn. That's two game rounds played through. Um, they've done their drawing of hexes. We don't have any builds completing in this go, but as the game progresses, builds will complete, just how I demonstrated, and you can go through there yourself. I'd love to see what you guys come up with doing this demo. Um, let me know what you've experienced. If you need me to add anything else extra or anything like that, if you're finding that you're getting stuck on different things, just leave a comment in the, in the Kickstarter comment section. Nothing is set in stone. We can always help. I can always come onto Tabletopia and play with you if you like. Um, anything like that, just let us know. I'm more than happy to assist assist everything everything is up for change debate discussion just you know let's 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 build a community around this game and let's make this game as best as it as it can possibly be i hope you guys enjoyed this video i hope you guys go and play the demo and yeah thank you so so much thank you thank you thank you so much i really hope you consider back in the game thank you bye bye